I said I was paralyzed. I'm not paralyzed. Uh, but I did go through, I went to hell and back. And my road to recovery uh, had some potholes as well. What's going on everyone? Welcome to the Behavioral Arts. My name is Spidey and I use my degree in sociology and psychology, my certifications in criminal interrogation and body language analysis, and over 10 years experience as an award-winning mentalist to teach people behavioral analysis and practical psychology on stages and television shows all over the world. There is so much going on with Jamie Foxx lately. A mysterious hospitalization, rumors that he's gone blind, an apology post after accusations of anti-Semitism, and in this video, we're covering it all. The body language, the facial expressions, and the word choice that might reveal what's really going on. Okay, so before we get to the analysis, I feel like I should just give a quick summary of what happened. In April, Jamie Foxx was mysteriously hospitalized. His family was quite silent about why he was in the hospital, although his daughter, Corinne, made a statement saying that it was due to a medical complication. There are also some rumors that on set, while filming a movie just before being hospitalized, there was a little bit of tension. He had a couple of producers fired. So people were speculating about if the two are connected. During this time, Jamie Foxx himself was quite silent, which led to a lot of people speculating about what's really going on with him. One very popular rumor that spread like a wildfire on the internet was that he was in the hospital as a side effect to the COVID vaccine that caused a blood clot, which then led to blindness and or paralysis. And although a lot of social media influencers were really pushing that story, a lot of news outlets reported that representatives for Jamie Foxx said it was completely untrue. And in the video we're looking at today, Jamie Foxx himself denied at least some parts of that rumor. Other rumors include accidents, confrontations within the Hollywood elite, and the fact that Jamie Foxx was cloned. Whatever the case may be, after a couple of months of silence, Jamie Foxx published a video on his Instagram account where he addressed the reason for his hospitalization. Or rather, he kind of addressed the reason he was in the hospital. He was still pretty mysterious about it. And that's the video we're going to look at today. We're going to look at the word choice, the facial expressions, and try to figure out what the heck is going on. As if this whole mess wasn't enough, shortly after, Jamie Foxx took some serious heat because of an Instagram post where he wrote, They killed this dude named Jesus. What do you think they'll do to you? Hashtag fake friends, hashtag fake love. Shortly after, he took down the post and issued a written apology, also on Instagram, to anyone who was offended by the original post, which had an anti-Semitic insinuation. At the end of the video, we're also going to talk about that post and how it actually relates to the video about the hospitalization. All that being said, let's go. First of all, I want to say thank you to everybody that's prayed man and sent me messages. I cannot even begin to tell you um, how, how far it took me and how, how it brought me back. Um, uh, I went through something that I, I thought I would never ever go through. Uh, and I know a lot of people were waiting, you know, or wanting to hear updates, but to be honest with you, I just didn't want you to see me like that, man. You know, I want you to see me laughing, having a good time, partying cracking a joke, doing a movie, television show. I didn't want you to see me with uh, with tubes um, running out of me and and trying to figure out uh, if, if I was gonna make it through. Okay, let's start by talking about gestures that are happening very frequently throughout this video, starting with the eyebrow flash. The eyebrow flash is when we're talking to someone and we see the eyebrows go up like this. Now, the eyebrows are a very studied body part in behavioral psychology and in sociology because in the way that we evolved, our eyebrows became a lot more mobile to help us communicate. We communicate a lot with our eyebrows. Just think about how if I want to get your attention non-verbally, I might look at you and go like this and you might know there's something going on. There is a ton of research on the eyebrow flash in social interactions. I'll leave some links in the description if you want to learn more about the research but it basically comes down to the fact that when we see an eyebrow flash, it usually means one of three things. One is emphasis, like you're emphasizing something. Two is some sort of social connection, social greeting, some sort of social approval, like sometimes you see someone, you say hi, and the eyebrows go up. Or surprise, if something surprises us, the eyebrows shoot up. Now, the really interesting thing about Jamie Foxx is that depending on which video of him you watch, his eyebrows are sometimes really animated and sometimes not. So if we go back in his social media and we look at videos of him talking straight to camera, in moments where he's saying things that are coming from the heart, a message to his audience, 
we see those eyebrows come to life quite a bit. A lot of emphasis and a lot of social connection. However, when he's trying to get information across and he's trying to make sure that he's saying all the things he's supposed to say, his eyebrows move much less. And this has been very reliable in Jamie Foxx's behavior throughout the years. Here is a video of him from 2010, after the Haiti earthquake, where a bunch of artists got together and re-released We Are The World, who was written and produced by Michael Jackson, Lionel Richie, and Quincy Jones. And the video was introduced by Jamie Foxx. So in the beginning of the video, when he was talking about what he was supposed to say and trying to give the history of the song, his eyebrows were pretty still. 25 years ago, Quincy Jones gathered an amazing group of artists and musicians to create We Are The World, written by Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie. But at the end of it, when he was from the heart appealing to the audience to give what they can, those eyebrows started to move a little bit more. So this gesture seems to go beyond baseline for him to what we call idiosyncratic gestures, which are gestures that are specific to a person regardless of context or conversation. And this behavior makes a lot of sense. It's very common that when someone is concentrating or focused, the eyebrows lower and stay pretty still. However, when we are socially connecting, those eyebrows come to life. Therefore, it makes a lot of sense that in this video that we're analyzing today, in the beginning, when he's talking to his audience, thanking them for their prayers and their messages, and I would help them get through these difficult times, we're seeing a lot of eyebrow flashes because he's speaking from the heart, he's emphasizing a lot of things, and he's connecting with his audience. But then when he switches to talking about how he just wants to entertain, he wants to stick to doing movies, and he didn't want us to see him with tubes, and he's speaking very carefully to make sure he doesn't say anything to give away too much information, and he's measuring his words a little bit more, we see those eyebrows go to that still place where he's no longer doing those eyebrow flashes. This is gonna to indicate to me that at some point in that beginning, he's shifting from speaking from the heart to sticking to a little bit more of a planned script and navigating that a little more carefully. Next up, we have another behavior we're seeing a lot in this video, and it is a very particular type of licking his lips. So quite often when we talk about lip licking, we're talking about a gesture where the tongue comes out really quickly, licks the lips and goes back in like this. Sometimes it's a bit of a sweep like this, but typically it's just a quick out and back in. With Jamie Foxx, you'll notice that quite often it comes off to the side a little bit. And sometimes it goes from the side to the middle, then back in. This gesture also appears to be idiosyncratic for Jamie Foxx. In other words, this is not the first time I've seen him do that. If you go back and look at some videos on his social media where he's talking to the camera, it happens the same way, where it comes out on an angle and either goes back in or goes from that angle to the middle, then back in. Now, licking the lips typically is an indication of one of two things. One is stress. When we're stressed, we lick the lips because they're feeling dry and that helps correct it. And second is grooming. Grooming is gestures we do to fix our appearance. And when we lick the lips, it brings more redness to the lips and makes us seem a little bit more presentable. So typically, it's one of those two things. But in the case of Jamie Foxx, because it's in his baseline or idiosyncratic behaviors, I think it might be something else. I think it might be what we call pacifiers, adapters, or self-soothing gestures. These are gestures of a repetitive and massage-like nature that help reduce stress a little bit, self-soothing. So in his case, because there's that little bit of a sweeping motion, I feel like it might be like almost a nervous tick or this self-soothing gesture that he does. Because think about it, if the tongue just goes out and in really quick, that could be to reduce dryness or to bring more color. But when you rub it like this, it does have a little bit more of a self-soothing element to it. In fact, we often see people do it inside the lips like this as a self-soothing gesture. So in the case of Jamie Foxx, it might be dryness, it might be grooming, but I really think there's an element of pacifying to that gesture as well. Another thing we're seeing a lot in this video, which is not idiosyncratic for Jamie Foxx, is there's a lot of hesitation, a lot of ums and pauses, and he often stops a sentence and then picks it up again. And I think this is because of two reasons. One, I think this is getting him quite choked up and emotional. In fact, we're gonna see towards the end where he does start welling up. And secondly, I believe because he's actually speaking from the heart, he doesn't have a script to stick to per se, and he's trying to make sure he speaks right and doesn't give away too much or say something wrong. So he's planning his words as he's going along which causes a bit more hesitation to make sure he's doing it right. 
There's a mini cluster of behaviors right in the beginning as he says, I cannot even begin to tell you how far it got him. The messages, the prayers. And as he's saying, I cannot even begin to tell you, we see a few things. The first is an eye block or a slow blink. This is basically when the eyes close for a moment as someone is talking. And this is a gesture that's been highly researched and we see it all over the world, even in children. And think of the eyes as the garage door to your thoughts. When we close our eyes, either we're trying to keep something out, like someone gives you bad news and you close your eyes because you just don't want to deal with it, or we're trying to keep something in, like when we're focused or concentrating and we're trying to really keep our thoughts in. But in the same way that we use it to keep thoughts in, we also sometimes use it to keep emotions in. Like when we're really touched by something, we might close our eyes to really hold on to that moment. So think about somebody who worked really hard for something, who's being told that they won or they accomplished it. In that moment, they might close their eyes to hold on to that moment. It very often happens with very emotional good news as well. The second thing you'll notice is that as he's saying that statement, his head is going side to side like this, doing a no gesture. And this is a gesture I talk about a lot on the channel because there are so many misconceptions about it out there. A lot of people think that the moment you see someone doing this in conversation, that they're being deceptive. And I say this again and again, there aren't any gestures that can allow you to know for a fact that someone's being deceptive, least of all a head shake like this. But context is really, really important. And in this case, if you listen to the words that he's saying, he's saying, I cannot even begin to tell you. So it makes perfect sense to have this gesture because he's saying, you know, I don't have the words. I can't tell you. I don't know how. So that no, that conflict makes perfect sense in that moment. And of course, during all this, the eyebrows are dancing as well, which again is social connection and emphasis. So in this case, I think simply he's, he's quite touched by these gestures. He doesn't really know how to express it. Uh, the, the, the eyes are closed in that moment of holding on to this emotion, feeling that gratitude and the eyebrow flashes connecting with the audience. There's another behavior that we're seeing very often in this first clip and it's combined with other behaviors that come and go. And it's as he's talking, he'll just stop mid sentence and we'll hear this sharp exhale. The first time we see it really clearly is when he's saying, I was going through something that I, and we hear that exhale as he shakes his head, looks to the side, stops mid sentence. And we even see his lips come together with a little bit of tightness around the lips. I went through something that I, I at the end, when he's talking about how he didn't know if he was going to make it through, same thing. He stops mid-sentence, we hear that sharp exhale, the lips come together and there's some tightness around the lips and the head is shaking like this. And trying to figure out uh, if, if I was going to make it through. That second time, however, we do see another gesture that we're going to see again later in the video and it's this squint. As he stops his sentence, we see this kind of squinting. All these gestures are pretty consistent with trying to keep emotions in. So you'll notice sometimes when you're speaking and you feel you're about to get emotional, you might just take a pause. We just stop. This is very, very common. We see this during eulogies or sad speeches. The person just stops mid sentence. And this exhale is also quite common. The, just a second to calm down kind of distance ourselves, maybe trying to push that emotion out. The eyes squinting like this is something we often see with skepticism or criticism, like if we're criticizing something or like, you know, what, what, what are you doing? But we also do see it when we're trying to hold tears back or emotions back. And sometimes you see the person close their eyes to kind of try to keep it in. But if you're talking to a camera and you don't want to close your eyes, you might just see a bit of a squint like that. So it's very consistent with this trying to hold things in. Then we have the no gesture, which again can have so many meanings, but you know, we know that with him earlier when he said, I cannot even begin to tell you, we saw this no. So, you know, I, I don't have the words. I don't know how to do this. So a lack of something. And in this moment, it could simply be, you know, I didn't know if I was going to make it. So he's struggling with that thought of not knowing what was going to happen. And in the first one, he even literally says, I went through something that I, I never thought I would go through. So these are all things that he's having a hard time with. Disbelief. Didn't think I was going to be able to get through this. I didn't think I'd go through this. Another really important thing I want you to notice is just as he's saying, I didn't want you to see me with tubes. Just before he says tubes, again, there's a pause. And this time he takes a breath in, but we see something really distinct. And we're going to see it a couple of times in this video, but this is a really obvious one where we see what we call nostril flaring. We see his nostrils literally open up as he takes that breath in. I didn't want you to see me with a, 
with tubes. And nostrils flaring, opening up, also in the research they call this wing dilation, happens when we are in fight or flight response. So whether you call it fight or flight, freeze, fight or flight, freeze, fight, flight, or fawn, there's a lot of different ways to reference the same thing, but it's basically when your body is responding to a stressor. And there's certain things that we could see on the body and nostril flaring is one of them. The nostrils open up for more oxygen intake because we're getting ready to deal with something. And we very often see this with sadness as well. In fact, often when someone's crying, we might see the nostrils open up and quiver like this. We're just trying to get oxygen because the body is trying to figure out how to survive. Does it need to run? Does it need to face a confrontation? It's trying to figure it out. So all these things, stopping mid-sentence, that audible exhale, the nostril flaring, that squinting, all these things happening during the speech is indicating that he is experiencing a certain emotion and he's trying to stop himself from getting emotional. And at some point it's gonna to get to him, but throughout he's making these attempts to not let it happen. In fact, if you listen to his words, he's purposely trying to avoid pity, right? Because throughout this experience, I'm sure he had a lot of opportunities to take some pictures of him in a hospital bed and post that and be like, you know, send prayers or send me your thoughts or try to like get sympathy out of people. But in this case, even saying like, I didn't want you to see me with the tubes, you know, I just want to entertain. I want to make people happy. I want to make people laugh. I want you to see me in movies. So even in his words, he's indicating that he's not seeking pity or sympathy, which would explain why when that emotion is coming, he's trying to stop it. He just wants to entertain. And this is going to be pretty consistent throughout this video. One last thing that I want to point out before we move on from this is that he literally says in there that he knows we wanted to hear updates. He knows that people want updates. And throughout this video, he's not really gonna update us when it comes to the medical condition and what it was and why he was there. In fact, he dances around the subject quite effectively. Like anytime he's gonna say it, he kind of turns away and goes, you know, I didn't wanna do this. I didn't really know what was happening or if I was gonna make it, but you know, I don't wanna talk about that. I just wanna entertain you. I just wanna make you laugh. And it's kind of like he almost gets there, but then very meticulously and cleverly, he turns around it. So there are efforts here that are being made to not talk about specifically the reason he was in the hospital. And that's interesting to me. Okay, now we're gonna move on and look at the rest of the video to see just how much he's telling us about what actually happened. Then we're gonna look at his Instagram apology and see how it relates to this video and what we can deduce about it based on this video. Because there's some really big clues that when you connect the two, start to make sense. But before we do, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on for more behavioral analysis and practical psychology content. And for regular viewers who want to encourage the channel, I will leave a link in the description to the membership section where you could find out more about the perks you get as a member. I cannot tell you how great it feels to have your family kick in in such a way. And, and y'all know they kept it airtight. They didn't let nothing out. They protected me. And that's what I hope that everyone could have in moments like these. Uh, now, you know, by being quiet, sometimes things, you know, get out of hand. People saying what I got. Some people said I was, I was blind, but as you can see, uh, as you can see, the eyes are working. The eyes are working just fine. Uh, I said I was paralyzed. I'm not paralyzed. Uh, but I did go through, I went to hell and back. And my road to recovery uh, had some potholes as well. But, um, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm coming back. Okay, so in this clip, I think he's actually saying a little bit more than he thinks he's saying. Uh, right in the beginning, he's talking about his family and how they kept it airtight, they didn't let anything out. And as he's saying that, he's smiling, he's happy about that. And at the end of that sentence, he says, they protected me. And as he says, they protected me, we see that chin come up as he goes, they protected me. We see the head come up like this as he gestures and the eyebrows go up in that same moment, again with that eyebrow flash. Now on the channel, we often talk about the universal emotions, emotions that look more or less the same anywhere in the world. And there are the basic ones that are very often talked about, but researchers Tracy and Robbins actually built on the universal emotions when they discovered that pride is also a universal emotion with a pretty high recognizability rate pretty much everywhere in the world. And there are certain things that happen that indicate pride 
cross-culturally. Now, one of the things that happens with pride is a slightly upwards chin like this. And that makes a lot of sense because when we're unconfident or when we're feeling vulnerable or defensive, we protect things that are vital, the wrists, the main organs, the neck, we close in. But as we feel comfortable, as we feel confident, and pride is very closely related, things tend to open up. So this chin up is something we often see with confidence and pride. So in that moment, when he's saying they protected me, he's feeling a sense of tribal pride. Like my family, my tribe, they protected me. But what is he talking about when he says they protected me? How did they protect him? Well, they protected him by not leaking this information, by not saying anything. So he sees silence and privacy as protection. So there's an element to him wanting privacy so much that he feels that by his family respecting that and not going out and saying what he's got, they're actually protecting him. Then he does something really clever. The entertainer in him comes out because as he says, you know, things got out of hand, people said that I was blind, and he immediately goes into class clown mode, right? To make us laugh. He makes the silly faces. He goes, look, I'm not blind. And he's playing around with his eyes. And this is really clever. It got a laugh out of me. It's nice to see him in good humor. You know, he's going back to that, what he said earlier, like all I want to do is entertain. All I want to do is make you laugh. So he's going right to that. But this is also a diversion from the topic. The topic being, what the heck happened to you? So he's not saying these things didn't happen, but here's what actually did happen. So again, he's staying consistent with that need for secrecy, but he's deflecting in a very effective way with humor, which is what he does best. And I just want to like say uh, I, that, I, that I, I love everybody and I love all of the love that I got. And man, you know, I know they talk about people crying on videos, you know, you could do take two, but I'm not gonna do a take two, this, it is what it is. And We continue to see his idiosyncratic behaviors here. So we're seeing the tongue, come out again off to the side. Uh, the eyebrow flashes have slowed down quite a bit. We do see a really big one when he says, all the love that I got, and that's classic emphasis because even emphasizing with his words, the volume gets louder, he enunciates it, he says it's slower. All the love that I got. He also makes a point here of saying that, you know, people say you could do a take two, but I don't wanna do a take two. So he expresses that he just wants the raw emotion here and he's not gonna retake this. So I think in him it's like, there's this thing going, yeah, it's really too bad that I, I actually broke down, but you know, it is what it is, this is how I'm feeling, and they deserve to get th the real me, how I really feel about this. Because you could tell throughout this whole thing that this is, if not the first take, one of the very first takes, because he's stopping and he's thinking and he's not really sure where this is gonna go, and he's being careful with his words, and he's balancing between getting that emotion and kind of dancing around the topic of what happened. Uh, but like I said, I just want you to remember me for uh, the jokes that I crack, uh, the, the movies that I make, some of them good, some of them ain't. I think I got a good one out. Uh, and the songs that I sing, man. And then, you know, some people were talking about I'm a clone. Well, check this out. Just kidding you. Uh, not clone, man, but I'm here on earth because of some great people. I'm here on earth because of God, man. So I love all y'all. Uh, I just wanted to jump on here and let you know that uh, I'm on my way back in love. And again, at the end, a lot more of the same. Eyebrow flashes, uh, gratitude, dancing around the subject, and again, making the jokes with the, you know, people said I'm cloned, and he goes to remove the mask, and he goes, no, I'm not cloned. There's an interesting choice of words there where he goes, I want you to remember me for the jokes that I told and the movies that I made. And it's interesting, I want you to remember me. Interesting choice of words. And I'm left wondering, like, was his state so critical in the hospital that he started thinking about his legacy and what he wants to leave behind and what he wants people to remember him for? Because I want to be remembered for is not something we typically hear in young, healthy people. It's usually when we're talking about not being around anymore. So that thought is maybe somewhere in his head. Maybe that's an indication of that. Or maybe this is a clone. And he's kind of like telling us, Jamie would have wanted you to remember him for you know the movies and the jokes. But I, I studied human behavior. All my degrees and certifications on human behavior. I know nothing about clone behavior. So way out of my depth. If this is in fact a clone, I'm out. 
you know, in all seriousness, it's not I want to be known for. It's not I just want to make you laugh. You know, I want you to watch my movies. It's I want you to remember me for this. So anyways, maybe it's not that important, but that word really did catch my attention and made me wonder, like, did part of this make him think about what he's going to leave behind and his legacy? I think there might be an element of that. Okay, before we move on to the Instagram apology, let's kind of wrap up this video and what we have from here. We have someone who just wants to talk to his fans after a while of silence to assure them that he's fine, he's okay, he's not blind, he's not paralyzed, he's not a clone or so he says, um, but that ultimately, he, you know, it was tough, something was tough, he's going to be okay. He's also speaking very ambiguously about what he went through. Now there are several ways to look at this. We can look at it and say, there's some sort of cover-up. There's something happening that is, it's, it's, maybe it's a bad look. He's maybe ashamed of something or that something secretive is happening that he's not supposed to talk about. We can look at it that way or we could simply look at it and saying he just wants his privacy. Um, you know, he said numerous times throughout this and this is consistent with him throughout the years that he likes to entertain. He's often the comic relief in movies but even on his Instagram, he's often doing silly things and some celebrities are just like that. They want to entertain, they want to do what they have to do, and then they're quite private about their lives. So maybe he just doesn't want that part of his life to be public. He wants to keep that for himself. That's another way to look at it. So I don't think that either of those two ways of looking at this is unreasonable. For me personally, I can absolutely respect that this is his decision. He wants his privacy. Of course, a part of me is curious to go like, okay, well, what's the big deal? I mean, you're talking like you almost died here. What happened? What's going on? Tell us, tell us. But I ultimately respect that he just wants to entertain and may not want to go into the specifics of this. Do I think that this is a side effect of the vaccine? Do I think that there's a big inside Hollywood plot? Do I think he was cloned? Listen, all these things have varying probabilities, but behavioral analysis can't allow me to know by looking at his behavior that, oh, oh yeah, he's definitely hiding that someone in Hollywood is trying to murder him. Like, that's not something I can tell. He's trying to conceal the truth here. We can see that. We can see him dancing around the subject, but I can't know what he's trying to conceal. And anything that we speculate is just that, a speculation. As for the cloning thing, like, come on, there isn't enough evidence. I'm not saying it's completely impossible. I'm just saying like, it's a massive assumption to assume that he must be a clone just because he looks a little different. Like I was in a hospital for weeks on end. I would be more inclined to believe he was a clone if he came out looking the exact same. Okay, now let's move on to the whole Instagram thing and how it actually relates to everything we just said. So in the post, once again, he said that they killed this dude named Jesus. What do you think they'll do to you? Hashtag fake friends, hashtag fake love. And this caused an uproar and a big reaction because people assumed that by they, he meant the Jewish community, Jewish people. They're the ones who killed Jesus. So like, they did that, what do you think they'll do to you? Now, in his apology post, he said that the they that he was referencing is bad friends, fake friends. And that is reflected in the hashtag, hashtag fake friends. And basically saying what he meant is like, you know, the same way Judas was a bad friend to, to Jesus, like sometimes people that we trust, or that we think are friends or that we love, end up being fake friends who betray us. So, in that case, the they is a reference to Judas, but not because he was Jewish, but because he was a bad friend. He betrayed Jesus. So then he took the post down and he apologized. So the question is, did he mean to be anti-Semitic with that post? Or was it just a really bad choice of words that ended up sounding that way? Let's use our profiling skills and our deductive reasoning. Right, so let's go back and look at the video we just watched of him. And now he puts this huge priority on, I just want to entertain you. I just want to make you laugh. I want to make movies. And how he keeps going to that doing the thing with the eyes to get a laugh and the thing with the mask to get a laugh. And he's talking about, you know, how he loves everyone and how grateful he is for all the prayers and all the love. So a lot of at least seemingly love and appreciation for his audience. I'm not saying that that necessarily reflects who he is at his core, but at least that's what he's trying to project. We can also think about the fact that we looked at a video of him uh, earlier from a couple of years ago where he took it upon himself to be the spokesperson for efforts to help Haiti after the earthquake 
and got all these artists together where he talked about love and giving back and helping out the community. So again, this doesn't necessarily speak to who he is at his core because the moment the cameras are off, he could be a very different person. But at least that's what he's trying to project. That's the message that he's trying to send out. I think it would be really stupid and off-brand for him to make this random anti-Semitic post that he can't gain anything from after he's made so much of his career about entertainment and making people happy and putting good out there and working on the remake of We Are The World with Pink and Barbara Streisand. So let's just suppose for a moment that he harbors anti-Semitic feelings. But this entire time in his career, he's put up this front, all just to make this random anti-Semitic post with no benefits and crumble that entire image over the years. So to sum up, I'm not saying for sure that he's not anti-Semitic. I have no way of knowing that. I don't know the guy, I haven't interviewed him. But I'm telling you that I don't think he's stupid enough to just randomly openly blurt that out. In fact, I think the only reason that he would have posted that in those words the way that he did is because it didn't even cross his mind that it might be construed that way, that it might be taken that way. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to have interpreted that way. If somebody from the Jewish community read that, the wording is a little off and, and they would have the right to go, oh, oh, I'm not a fan of that. And so they voiced it. He didn't fight back. He didn't say, no, you're wrong. He just said, oh yeah, oh, I could see that. Took down the post and apologized for it and said, sorry, wasn't my goal to insult anyone. I think when it comes to that post, it was more than likely just a poor choice of words and not much more. Okay, so there it was. Again, a lot going on with Jamie Foxx uh, and Maybe more will come out, you know, maybe with time he'll just open up a little bit more. I, I think a lot of people are pushing to be like, what happened to you in the hospital? So maybe he'll just succumb to peer pressure and he will just tell us all what happened. Uh, and if he doesn't and he wants his privacy, that's okay too. But yeah, in summary, I think he is avoiding the topic, whether because he's hiding something or because he just wants his privacy, I don't know. And yeah, in conclusion, I think there's a big focus about just wanting to entertain, making people happy, and that's it keeping his privacy to himself. Let me know what you think about that in the comments and I will see you on the next one.